Now we will go back again to natural dyes. We have still not talked about carotenoid dyes and today's lecture is dedicated to carotenoid dye and the dye source is Delonyx. You must have seen this flower all around the campus, all around your uh, school, college and in your vicinity and this is that famous Delonyx regia or gulmohar plant which is a reddish brown in color, uh, rather orangish red in color and it is so brightly uh, colored that one cannot escape not seeing this flower ever in the life. So, let us take a look at this source of carotenoid natural dye called Delonyx. Use of Delonyx regia as dye. The red flowers of Delonyx regia or gulmohar as what I told you have been evaluated for natural dyeing of silk using biomodent and enzymes for the first time with a deliberate attempt to avoid metal mordanting in silk dyeing. Because as I told you that although we need bright colors, but in order to obtain bright colors it became mandatory to use the metal mordants and the metal mordants that were used popularly in the industry were alum, iron, copper, chromium and tin. So, we were trying to look for an alternative where this metal mordanting step can be eliminated. Use of Delonyx regia as dye. The red flowers of Delonyx regia or gulmohar as what I told you have been evaluated for natural dyeing of silk using biomodent and enzymes for the first time with a deliberate attempt to avoid metal mordanting in silk dyeing. Because as I told you that although we need bright colors, but in order to obtain bright colors it became mandatory to use the metal mordants and the metal mordants that were used popularly in the industry were alum, iron, copper, chromium and tin. So, we were trying to look for an alternative where this metal mordanting step can be eliminated. This would make the textile dyeing more eco-friendly. The present study or the discussion was designed to evaluate the potential of this natural dye source for its dye content and to replace metal mordanting step by the use of enzyme or biomordant. The aqueous extract obtained from the dried red flowers were used for dyeing of silk fibers. Good and bright reddish brown hue color was observed when 30 percent weight by weight with respect to the weight of the fabric of Delonyx ex of the fabric, Delonyx extract was used on the pre-treated silk material. The silk fabric were treated with either, either enzyme or biomodern. So, we did not want to use metal modern. At the same time, we wanted to show that this reddish color, hue color can, reddish orangish color can be maintained and it is a very good potential dye falling in the category of carotenoid dyes to be used for silk and in the silk industry we were trying to popularize. Dyed fabric showed resistance to fading. Finally, all dyed specimens were tested for wash and light fastness properties making Delonyx or gulmohar a viable alternative to synthetic red dyes. So, our sole aim was that can we use this particular dye for the preparation of red colored material. Through desorption studies, the order of reactivity of enzyme towards the dye uptake in one step process was found to be that lipase was best second best was diesterase and the third best was protease and amylase combination. And this was almost equal to the biomodent that is the pyrus. Similarly, 
for two steps the order of reactivity of enzyme was found to be that protease amylase combination was better than lipase which was better than pyrus that is the biomordant and diesterase was found to be least effective towards the silk fiber. Now, as I by now you will be able to understand why I am trying to introduce too many things to you because you have already learned these things. You have learned the treatment of silk with enzymes and I had specifically told that there is a dye to enzyme compatibility. So, fabric can be treated with any of the enzyme, but which dye will be more compatibly accepted by this treated fiber is what matters and therefore, we did two things. We first did one step that means, everything was added into the same dye bath or we did step wise which means that the first the enzyme was pre treated to the fabric and secondly then it was dyed. So, both the procedure then show different kind of effectivity and that is what uh, you know we have tried to understand the chemistry by doing the desorption studies. See we can do it either ways, we can do uh, you know different types of dyeing and then evaluate the CLI, CIE lab values and look at the K by S values. But at the same time we also introduce that in order to understand where the dye uptake has been better than the other one this was the desorption studies were followed and it showed clearly that in one step lipase was the desired enzyme and even the biomodent showed very good result. Similarly, in the two step the uh, protease amylase combination was very good and that was uh, even uh, the same thing was observed for the pyrus biomodent. You may recall that in pyrus pastia copper was evaluated as the main biomodent. So, as the main modenting metal by atomic absorption. So, the same biomodent we have used in order to replace the metal modent because copper sulphate I had very clearly told you that is it comes under the hazardous chemical. And so, we should avoid using this direct metal modenting but because the plant material the biomodent has just very minimal amount of the metal sufficient for the purpose of modenting that is why it is safer to handle. And another advantage is that while we are you know extracting the dye from the plant material in this case we are talking about Delonyx regia flowers. The same time we can add pyrus pastia fruits into it and it will do the simultaneous modenting. So, no need to do different steps of uh, modenting in the simultaneous modenting when we are preparing the extract of the Delonyx at that point of time only we can add the pyrus pastia. So, that is how we try to look at the minimization of the steps. We also try to look at the overall you know process how it can be made industrially more friendly process. Flowers of Delonyx regia let us now try to take a look at you know what is the composition of the flowers. Flowers are large brilliant red orange occurring in numerous huge terminal clusters at the ends of the branches. Each individual flower has five large wide spreading petals almost like one to one, one and a half to two inches long. One petal streaked with white and yellow flowering appears in early summer and continues for several months in Indian temperature and climate. Thus Delonyx flower 
through seasonal is abundantly those seasonal is abundantly available for dyeing purpose. So, there is no dearth of the plant material. There is ample of flower available and the season is prolonged to a very long time. So, therefore, one can make use of this rich colorant uh, for the industrial purpose. Purohit et al have used different parts such as petals, calyx, petals and the whole flower of the Delonyx regia for dyeing cotton and silk yarn, but they have used metal mordant. What we tried to do was to minimize the step of dyeing and to popularize the extraction process, to popularize the dyeing process using enzymes and biomodents. So, that is where we tried to bring in the innovative technology for silk dyeing with Delonex regia. Let us try to now look at the chemical constituent of Delonex. The red color in Delonex regia flower or gulmohar flower is most probably due to the co-pigmentation between anthocyanin and other flavonoids. The color of the reddish yellow flowers is mostly attributed to the increase of isocelipurposoid concentration along with an increase in the background of the yellow cytoplasmic carotenoids. So, there is a major composition of carotenoids apart from some anthocyanin and flavonoids. I have told you time and again that natural dyes do not exist as a single dye, unlike the synthetic dyes. Just uh, a while ago, we were taking a look at the sulfur dye. There, when we talk about a sulfur dye, it is just one molecule. But here, when we talk about the extract of any flower, which is a source of dye, it has anthocyanin dyes, it has flavonoid dyes, but a major component is carotenoid dyes and therefore, we will call it as a class of carotenoid dyes. You will just take a, uh, you will see for yourself that there are large number of carotenoid molecules. A comparative study of the carotenoid present in various floral parts of Delonyx regia has been made to gain information about the biogenesis and the role of carotenoids in the flower. The qualitative and quantitative distribution of carotenoid was studied by chromatographic and spectrophotometric and other uh, analytical methods. So, it has been found by the methods that are normally used for the analysis. Chromatographic techniques help in separation of the various colorants. Spectrophotometric methods helps in finding out the structural details of the molecules that have been separated out and so on and so forth. The partition ratio hitherto not reported of a number of different carotenoids between different solvents are reported. The petals contain about 29 carotenoids. So, do not you think that now it is a class of carotenoid rather than I would put it under the category of anthocyanin or flavonoids. The major pigments found were phy uh, phytoene, phytofluene, beta carotene, gamma carotene, lycopene isomers, rubiaxanthine, lutein, zeaxanthine and several epoxy carotenoids. So, as many as 29 carotenoids have been found in Delonex regia. Chelation with biomodent, obviously when we are talking about the structure, we are trying to look at various points at which the biomodent or the enzyme can link up, because unless and un until the structure of the these carotenoid have linking groups or in other words the uh, you know the attachments or the functional groups that can help or the oxochromes that can help in binding it will be of no use and the dye will not fall into the category of a good dye 
Besides the anthocyanins of uh, Delonyx regia, other flavonoid present were identified namely quercetin 3 glutinoside, quercetin 4 prime glucoside, quercetin 3 glucoside as shown in the figure next in the next page uh, in the next slide I will show you. 5 glucoside, chalconone arginine 2 glucoside, these pigments also play a role in the dyeing of the fabric. Their chelation to biomodent or to enzyme would be determining factor of their dye ability. But the dye adherence is probably taking through these hydroxy containing compounds because you have learned the structure of beta carotene and you see that it has lot of conjugation and it has you know alkyl groups, but it does not have the hydroxy group. So, similarly the flavonoids which have the hydroxy group which are present as co-pigment along with the carotenoids are actually participating in the dyeing process, but the color attribution is coming from the carotenoids which are 29 in number. So, if you look at these three uh, different uh, flavonoids, you will see that all of them have ample number of uh, because they are all glucosides and uh, two of them are glucosides uh, 1 A and 1 C and they have as many as uh, 4 to uh, 8 uh, hydroxy groups which can participate in the chelation of the biomodents also in the, these are quercetin molecules and their glucosides A and C and the quercetin molecule per se uh, as 1 B. Now, when you look at these uh, flavonoids, you can very well understand that the alpha hydroxy is the one which helps in the, these two hydroxy groups which are present here are responsible for the uh, chelation with the biomodent. Pyrus having copper, this we have already established that Pyrus pastia fruit when it was 100 grams in uh, 1 liter deionized water was extracted and it was prepared for the analysis of atomic absorption spectroscopy and the analytical results showed the presence of copper to be in 10.66 milligram per 100 gram. So, you see this much is sufficient and whereas in metal modenting we are using in grams and the all only the required amount is being taken up by the fabric and the rest goes into the effluent. So, that is what we were trying to minimize. It is present in some chelated form thus it might be helping the dye to adhere to the fabric similar to the metal modenting effect. The high copper content suggested stronger and useful chelation to the colorant for better dye adherence. This fact is undisputed that metal is required. Now, whether we use an external source of metal salt in larger quantity or we use a biomodent which has just the optimal quantity of the metal is what is to be debated. And obviously, if this is doing the required functioning of creating good dye adherence, the, uh, the purpose is solved. So, there is no need to excessively pump too much of chemical into the dye bath when it is not required. So, that is what we were trying to emphasize and identification of this plant pyrus pastia and its having copper content was very well established in our laboratory. Chelation with quercetin. Now, considering the fact that the carotenoids are only imparting the color, but the actual chelation is done by the co-pigment that is the flavonoid and quercetin is one uh, flavonoid which was in abundance in that particular uh, aqua, um, in that uh, Delenix regia extract. The presence of 4 oxo group in quercetin in conjunction with hydroxyl group 
also helps in chelation in flavonoids. The chelation of copper on the side between the 4 oxo and the 5 hydroxy group in flavonols and flavones have already been proposed. The number of OH groups is also important. The higher the number, the higher their chelation ability is. Thus, in the similar manner, the copper in pyrus helps in chelation of copper too with the colorant comprising mostly of flavones and flavanols. Based on the above literature precedence, the probable mode of chelation of copper in pyrus with quercetin has been proposed as shown in the figure in the next slide. Chemical binding of the dye with biomodern has also been proposed analogous to the metal dye complex formation. So, what we have tried to draw an analogy is that the way the metal salt actually chelates using the two ortho hydroxy groups of the flavonoids and the quercetin has ideally such a situation. The same uh, philosophy or the same kind of chelation sites are proposed for metal uh, for the biomodern as well. Now, you here you will see that there are two quercetin molecules where the copper is nicely sitting in between. There are two coordinate bonds and two covalent bonds uh, with the oxygen. So, it is actually participating with the carbonyl and one hydroxy of the two groups where copper can form two co coordinate bonds and two covalent bonds. And these free hydroxy groups actually can have hydrogen bonding to keep the molecules intact and therefore, the molecule can be nicely made to adhere on the fabric. Study of the desorption of the dye from the dyed swatches. It was a technique which we thought would give us an insight about the dye ability or the dye uptake. So, extraction of the pigment of the dyed fabric in chloroform and measuring the absorbance of the extract by spectrophotometer. The higher the dye desorbed, the weaker is the dye adherence. The amount of dye desorbed by dyed silk fabric derived by the two dyeing methods have been carried out. Substantial quantities of dye were desorbed from the samples of the one step dyeing process which was an indication that of poor dyeing adherence whereas samples of the two step dyeing process show very good dye adherence. Now you see it also gives a deep insight into the dye adherence. Although superficially the CIE lab values could give us some kind of a deception. But when it comes to actually measuring the dye that can be dissolved from the dyed fabric and then trying to take a look whether the one step process that means pumping in everything that is the biomodent and the dye in the same dye bath or doing it stepwise that is first treating the fabric with the biomodent and then subsequently uh, treating it with the dye extract. These two processes when they are separated we call it two step process when everything is put together or the simultaneous modenting method then uh, it is called one step process. It showed that substantial quantity of dye was dissolved. Now, dye dissolving faster or more is an indication that dye has not adhered properly. So, we were trying to make a correlation between dye adherence and desorption and that gives an idea that the two step process is far better in a for Delonix regia. The, when we are using biomodent or enzyme as compared to the one step process, but for industry and for industrial uh, you know uh, betterment, process betterment, technology upgradation, one can suggest the one step 
process also. Desorption of dyed silk fabric showed the following result. In one step dyed fabric, diastrays treated fabric gave the best result, whereas in two step dyeing biomodern followed by protease amylase showed the best result. Overall, it can be concluded that in the case of desorption study of enzymatic treatment and biomodern, the one step process desorbed larger quantities of dye, meaning thereby that dye adherence in one step process was poor for both enzymic and biomodern treated fabric as compared to two step dyeing process. So, two things came into notice. One thing that which is the best enzyme suited. So, for one step process it is diesterase, in the two step process it is the biomodent followed by protease and amylase. So, this is the first conclusion. The second conclusion was that the dye dissolved was much more as quantity uh, in quantity wise in the one step process, whereas in the two step process the dye desorption was less. So, therefore, it was clear cut indication that biomodern and enzyme first react with the silk fabric and then if they are treated could adhere the dye well thereby showing good fastness property. So, it was a clear cut indication that stepwise that modenting either with biomodent or enzyme first and then dyeing with the extract will definitely give good dye adherence and will be re reflected in the fastness property. Because for every dye there is one ultimate goal and that is that the dye should have good fastness property. Otherwise, if it does not have good light fastness, wash fastness, rubbing fastness, it will not be taken up by the industry and it will not be categorized as a good dye for the industrial process. Evaluation of enzyme or biomodern treated dyed fabric in change uh, for change in K by S and color strength. The results of K by S and color coordinate values have been shown for Delonyx regia dyed silk fabric treated with different enzymes such as diesterase, lipase and protease amylase combination along with biomodern such as pyrus pastia by one step and two step process respectively. So, for all of them, for all the three enzymes that is lipase, but diesterase and protease amylase combination as well as for biomodern, both these processes were one step and two step dyeing were carried out. So, now I suppose it is very clear that what is meant by one step dyeing and what is meant by two step dyeing. The sample showed better dye uptake than control that is untreated as shown in by the increase in K by S value and color strength measured by the color measurements of the dye fabric using color scan machine. So, it was very clear from the dyed fabric that there was very good dye uptake. Suppose if a control was not taken, how would we pr compare? whether the dye uptake was better or worse. So, a control is always done, control is a fabric which does not have any pretreatment or any modenting. It is just a scoured fabric which is dipped into the dye solution. So, then one can see whether there is a any role of the enzyme which is being played or the biomodent and one can compare the C lab values and the K, K by S values. And this was done by the help of color scan machine which we have already learnt in great detail. The one step process versus two step results. 
You see, it is important to understand the chemistry and in order to minimize the step, can we have a sacrifice on the dye adherence or should we have a sacrifice on the dye adherence? No. Why? Because the ultimate goal for any dyeing is good dye adherence, good fastness property and that should not be sacrificed. So, it was found that in one step dyeing process, lipase was the best option. The order of reactivity of enzyme in one step process observed was that lipase is greater than diesterase which is better than protease amylase combination and protease amylase combination was almost equal to the results obtained by pyrus pastia biomodent. When similar study were done with two step dyeing process, protease amylase combination enzyme was found to be best option. The order of reactivity of enzyme in the two step process was found to be protease amylase was better than lipase which was better than pyrus and the least was diesterase. So, you see that reactivity completely differs and reactivity differs because the chemistry of the linkage is differing. I showed you how quercetin played a role in the copper uh, biomodenting and the copper was coming from the pyrus pastia which was in 10.66 milligram per 100 gram of the material. When we make an evalu uh, evaluation of the metal modern treated with dye fabric, I mean we also carried out it simultaneously in order to check, compare just the way we compared one step, two step different enzymes. We also tried to take a look at different metal moderns and the metal moderns that were used were alum, copper sulphate and ferrous sulphate. The purpose of using metal mordant was to compare the results with enzyme and biomordanted treated fabric swatches. It was found that results were comparable with that of enzyme and biomordant. So, you see the whole purpose of this exercise by using alum, copper sulphate and ferrous, we tried to show that yes, for dialonyx uh, regia one can use metal mordant. But is it really necessary to use the um, biomodern? Uh, is, is it really necessary to use the metal modern? No, biomodern can do the needful. So, therefore, the metal modenting was found to be as comparable in terms of its LAB values, in terms of its K by S values as compared to the values obtained by the enzymic treatment or the biomodern treatment. If we then take a look at the results of the metal modented, what was the kind of sequence that one comes across? In metal modenting process, we carried out one step and two step. It was observed that the results of the one step were far better than the two step. The modern activity of the three modern sequence was as follow. For one step dyeing the process, the order of reactivity was that copper was better than alum which was better than iron. And for two step dyeing process, iron was better than copper which was better than alum. This also explains the better reactivity of the biomodern as it contains copper metal in pyrus fruit extract. So, it also explained to us many hidden facts because by making a comparative data study of the metal salt uh, modenting and the pyrus biomodenting, we could make an analogous study and find the analogy how it may be reacting, why copper was found to be better why uh, in, in both the cases because copper is com common to them and why pyrus showed such good results was explained by the fact that copper 
salt mordanting shows very good results. So, so on and so forth. So, one comes to a conclusion unless and until we make a comparative analysis, unless and until we have you know a goal to compare with, we will not know whether it is better, equal or worse. So, in order to understand any science very logically, it is important to make comparative data. Biomodens, use of enzyme and biomodern were deliberate attempt to avoid metal mordanting in silk dyeing as it would make the textile dyeing more eco-friendly. The order of reactivity of enzyme in one step process was found to be lipase was better than diesterase which was better than protease amylase and this was almost equivalent to pyrus pastia the biomordant. Similarly, for two step dyeing process the order of reactivity of dyeing and enzymes in the two step process was observed to be protease amylase was better than lipase which was better than pyrus pastia biomordant and which was far better than diesterase. So, thus we can conclude that protease and amylase combination of enzyme was best option in the two step process. Now, why we were using enzyme and biomodent is of very important issue because we have been talking about metal mordanting being extremely harmful and non eco friendly and it was this particular uh, fact that we wanted to combat and that is why we wanted to replace the metal mordant by using either enzyme or uh, biomodent because if both show similar color effectivity then the purpose would be solved and rightly so the color strength effectivity was evaluated. The experiments showed that enzymatic and biomodern treatment can give very good color strength to the silk fabric using Dalonex regia that is gulmohar flowers as a dye source and has good potential for commercial dyeing. And thus it was established that the color strength effectivity did not deter or did not become less as compared to the metal mordanted silk dyeing fabrics. So, therefore, we can say that it was at par with the metal mordanting procedure. Overall, it can be concluded that in the case of enzymatic treatment and biomordant, the two step process was better in terms of larger K by S values, color coordinate values and dye adherence. We have shown that the former two gave comparable results with metal mordanted samples and thus were suited for industrial silk dyeing. So, this we have shown that Delonex regia the abundantly available flower can be used for silk dyeing in conjunction with enzyme or we can even use biomodern like py pyrus pastia and it can give the same result as what metal mordanted fabric would have given. Thus, there is a very important role of this enzyme. Thus, the role of enzyme in both the cases have been demonstrated to fix the dye molecules on the fabric surface which was not observed in the case of control sample which is devoid of enzyme treatment or in the case of where it is denatured enzyme was used. The enzymes are adsorbed by virtue of various ionic and non ionic forces of attraction onto the silk fabric through hydrogen bonding dipole dipole interaction and electrostatic forces. The enzyme dye complex thus formed on the surface of the dyed silk fabric acts as a barrier for not letting the dye get washed off. So, that is how it entangles the dye molecule and cages it in the dye enzyme and fabric complex. Mm -hmm.